you might have a hard time convincing your stakeholders of you know why some things are important but with Hotjar you show recordings you show you know the answers through surveys and feedback you show the heat maps and maybe you know users are clicking not where do you want them to click and so yeah that's a very powerful Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Behind the Experience where we gave you an inside look behind the top product-led experiences. Each week, uh, we'll, you will we'll give you some expiring UX examples, proven strategies, and hard-earned lessons from experts. This is one of your co-hosts, Ramli, and uh, my other co-host is here as well, Lila. Hello, hey everybody. Happy to be here. Happy to be back. Um... And I'm here with my uh, non-microphone stand microphone. So just giving everyone a heads up on that if I'm all over the place. And I'm so happy to be joined by, I'm a fanatic of this company brand, everything. I have an anecdote for him um, when he's allowed to speak after I introduce him, which is Alessio, Senior Product Designer at Hotjar. Welcome. So happy to have you. Hello. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I I have to st- tell my little story about hot jars that it has a special place in my heart um, okay. because it was the first remote company I interviewed with back mm. in 2018 that took a chance on me after having you know only a little bit of tech experience and absolutely no remote experience at the time. And my interview was with the founders. It was a much smaller company and I didn't get the job, obviously, never worked at Hotjar, but um, I was so honored to be interviewed at the time and I just always have a good and positive uh, impression of the brand because they took a chance on little old little old Lila who had hardly any experience at the time. Yeah, um, big fan as so, well. Yeah, so that's my heartwarming story about hot charge. So it's nothing to do with anything except for myself. Um, but I would love to learn a little bit more about the product side of things, Alessio. And you know, we have some gorgeous screens here uh, that we're going to share in a moment, but. You know, what does what does success look like for new users? I mean, maybe you could talk a little bit about what Hotjar does. I guess I shouldn't assume that everybody knows what you are and what you do. Um, so maybe in your own words, you could tell us a little bit about what Hotjar does and then, you know, what you would consider success for somebody who signs up. Yeah, for sure. So to start, I would say Hotjar allows product teams, a small to large, to connect and empathize with their own users. So essentially, Hotjar provides a variety of tools such as heat maps, recordings, uh, surveys, feedback tools, and others to see really and understand how your end users are using your uh, site or product um, and allow you to identify opportunities to provide a better experience. In order to do this, you know, we tend to see that users get a, the most value when they use all of the different, well, all, you know, or multiple tools uh, of the Hotjar tools uh, together um, because combining them allows them to not only, for example, maybe you're watching a recording and you're able to see, okay, maybe the user is getting stuck on, say, checkout. Um, and then potentially you could be using a survey or, you know, the feedback widget that appears on the page to ask the users, hey, how do you feel about this page? Are you experiencing any problems? And this really allows to get behind the why. Because a lot of times, you know, when users uh, might use, you know, the traditional analytics tools, they might have numbers, but sometimes it's hard to understand the reason behind those numbers and Hotjar tries to bridge that gap. That's awesome. And so how do you how do you know when someone's like signed up for the first time? What how do you get them how do you know that they're going to be successful or what are some key indicators that they're going to be somebody who ends up maybe purchasing if you're doing, if we're talking about a trial or um, upgrading or uh, maybe there's different, maybe it's a million different things. I don't know. Um, I know it can be a lot more complicated than just, Oh yeah, it's this. And this means that. Uh, for sure, we have a variety of users, of types of users or personas, you know, uh, using Hotjar. Uh, they can go from, you know, very small, maybe marketing agencies to large and established product teams in tech companies. So different uh, people will use Hotjar uh, in different ways. 
uh, we look at a lot of metrics, um, you know, other than the obvious ones, maybe related to like new accounts, retention and revenue. Um, some of the early indicators for us are the tracking code installation rate. So, you know, to get started with Hotjar, you need to install a snippet, a JavaScript snippet, or, you know, there's other ways to install, but that's the most common one. And so, of course, how long does it take to users to install uh, that? Do they install it in the first place? Uh, that's obviously uh, an important metric for us. Um, and we actually run a study where we kind of reverse engineered the golden path. So we looked at those users that are, you know, the most engaged, the ones that retain better, the ones that convert to paid plans, and really to understand, okay, what are those actions that they take, and how can we replicate those actions, and you know, guide all the users ideally uh, towards those actions. That makes a this makes a ton of sense. I mean, in terms of those metrics, you talked about installing that snippet. Uh, I'm curious, you know, that for us, that's one of the, you know, installing a snippet in code, you know, maybe they can access the, the code base or, you know, the, the challenge with that. Uh, what are some things you look at before they install the snippet? Like, are you, you know, are you, you know, what I call day one activities, it's things that they can do right when they sign up, like whether that's for us, it's, you know, like installing the our extension so that they can start creating flows. Is there something like that for Hotjar where people, you know, before they even install a snippet, you're looking at already some kind of some kind of usage or some kind of indicator that they're uh, doing something while they wait to install the snippet. Yes, there are actions like that, and actually, those are very important for us to really try to reduce the time to value when users come to Hotjar, right? So, actions like that include, for example, they can create a survey, and not only create it, but they can actually launch it and use it uh, if they use it as, as an external survey. What this means is essentially Hotjar provides a, a link that you can share then, um, and then you can already start using that survey. Of course, once you have the snippet installed, you can make that survey appear right on your site so it's more powerful, but it can still be valuable even before the snippet is installed. Other things include you know, setting up other things, like you can set up a feedback widget, for example. You cannot quite launch it without the uh, tracking code installed, uh, but you can configure it. You can also invite other users, teammates. Um, those are every, every Hotjar plan has unlimited seats. So it's very easy to get started collaborating, uh, and they can do it right away. What are some ways that you, as a product designer, have used Hotjar? Like, in, you know, uh, drank your own champagne. I'm not going to do the dog food thing. <laughs> For sure. We do that a lot at Hotjar. Um, because you know it's we are part of the target users essentially we're part of the uh, ideal customer profile in a way uh, we work in a product team um, so yeah it's very common we we watch recordings um, of uh, you know for when there are some uh, key flows that we want to investigate we watch recordings for example or we often um, use the, the the feedback widget uh, to get sentiment about Hotjar, or also ask uh, questions through surveys. So it's very, yeah, it's, it's it's a great tool for us as well to use. Yeah, I mean, what would be some advice that you would give to somebody who's like interested in getting like, heat maps and starting that for the first time? Like, you know, should they follow a process? You know, I know a lot of people are interested in getting start started with that and they install it and then they're like, ah, I see a bunch of information. <laughs> um, you know, where should I begin? Like, did you have some place that you prioritized when, when you were starting to look at things? Yeah, you know, that will depend a little bit on the use cases, but a lot of times it's a combination of different uh, strategies. So for example, you might already have uh, something like you know an, an analytics tool, so maybe you know where your users uh, drop uh, off of your site, uh, and so maybe that's a good place to start. Uh, and maybe you know, as I said, you have the numbers, but you don't really know what's understanding. Maybe there's a bug. Maybe there's something that's not clear. And so by using Hotjar in combination, for example, with uh, something like an analytics tool or even just uh, qualitative, you know, user interviews. Those are great tools. Uh, maybe you find something on Hotjar, and then you decide to investigate uh, through user interviews or by asking 
uh, questions right on the site with a survey. It's very fast. It's uh, very cheap, essentially. Um, or the other way around. Um, by combining these different data points, um, you can have a lot of value. I love that. I, I really do. Uh, you know, like you're talking about like this this whole flow. Are there other ones that you would take a look at? You talked about heat maps. You talked about you know um, the surveys. Are there other things that people should be looking at? Whether that's inside Hotjar or even outside. You're yeah. You mentioned customer interviews, and 100. percent I think that gives a lot of qualitative insights as well. Yeah, other things uh, that are quite useful in Hotjar are, for example, the highlights. You can create highlights from any of the tools uh, of Hotjar. For example, you want to save a heat map or save a snippet of a recording. You can bring them together in collections. And those collections then become very easy to share with your colleagues or teammates or even customers. Uh, so to say, hey, maybe you know, I, I create a collection about this bug that we just discovered uh, on the checkout page. Uh, and then you can create that. It makes it super easy to communicate. And you know, the good thing about Hotjar is that it really empowers the the you know product teams, but everyone really using it uh, to empathize with the users, but also to make your stakeholders empathize with users. Which you know a lot of times, as a designer, as a product manager, whatever your role is, you might have a hard time convincing your stakeholders of you know why some things are important. But with Hotjar, you show recordings, you show you know the answers through surveys and feedback, you show the heat maps, and maybe you know users are clicking. In, not where do you want them to click. And so, yeah, that's a very powerful uh, tool. Yeah, so I mean, think speaking about like, you know, trying to get users on that happy path, how did you, you know, we talked about getting the install code and like adding users, there are certain indicators, like, you know, how did you work cross-functionally in order to find those indicators and kind of map that to any you know, actual human touches or human intervention? Like, how did you work cross-functionally in that way? Yeah, so my, so the squad I work closest with is the activation squad. So as you can imagine, we work on first time use onboarding, um, user education in a way uh, about new features, for example. But we do work with many other uh, departments and squads. So for example, the, the data analytics team uh, is one that was a key partner uh, when we did that golden path analysis to really try and understand, okay, what are our most successful users doing with Hotjar? How can we replicate that? But other than that, we work very closely with uh, the acquisition uh, squad, with the product marketing team, uh, customer success, sales, <laughs> customer support. It's very much a, a large team effort. Sounds and very familiar. Effort. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It sounds familiar. It's definitely not something you can do in a vacuum. Mm. I love it. So that, yeah. Yep. Thank you for sharing that. I, I want to jump into some screens here from, from the stuff that you've been working at. Um, there's three of them for people who are tuning in via, uh, via audio, uh, there's a screen on, uh, on in front of us and it says, what would you like to do first in hot jar? There's four options. Visualize your user behavior, discover how your users feel, see what users see, hear from your users. Uh, and then there's an next and a skip. And then there's a quote uh, testimonial on the right side from Anna, head of acquisition of Vimcar. Can you talk a little bit about this, Alicia? Like, you know, the, obviously this is like the, uh, what Lila says is this is uh, you know the, the the golden goal of all onboarding is is segmenting and this looks like this is part of uh, what you're doing your team you and your team at Hotjar is doing here. Yes, so this is part of the what we call the sign up flow essentially, where the user is creating their account and uh, yeah, providing a little bit of info so that they can have a more customized experience. Uh, and get that guidance that's more relevant to them to achieve their goals. We did a lot of work on this in the last six months, probably. Uh, so this is one of the, the latest screens, which is live uh, now. And this used to be with, with a lot of changes, essentially. And we run a lot of experiments separately uh, to you know, A-B test or multivariate test to really try and understand, OK, what will work uh, after you know, we did some uh, user interviews and we have qualitative data and assumptions, of course, then how do we validate those with numbers? So these flow used to have a, 
a bunch of questions in the same screen uh, and not a lot of personalization really. So what we did was, uh, first of all, separate those questions where we're showing one question per screen right now so that it feels a little more relatable, more like a conversation. And we're bringing up these um, elements of personalization. So for example, in this screen allows them to select their uh, what they want to use or do first in Hotjar. And what follows will be more catered uh, and focused to this. We're also showing these quote from a user uh, to reinforce the, the message of how Hotjar has helped uh, similar people uh, to them. And also, you know, a lot of other small touches that seem insignificant, but then they really compound, like, for example, the progress bar on top, just to let the user know, hey, you know, you're this far away in the flow, the back button. We didn't have it before. Uh, it helps to have a back button right there. So really, you know, uh, myself, uh, my team, shout out to, the, to Casey, our content designer, uh, definitely did a lot of work to try and make this as smooth as possible. And the results have been really great on this. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to the copy as well, um, because a lot of people, I think, under appreciate the copy in um, onboarding flows, especially, right? Um, the reason that I like it is because it has, you know, what we all want to do, which is the value. Um, like, for example, for the people who are just listening, um, it says, visualize like there are four squares essentially and you know at the top says what would you like to do first in hot jar and then there's a like a paragraph text size below it that says this is used mm, to personalize your next steps and onboarding guidance right um and then there's four squares and you can select can you select multiple or just one Let me see. Mm. as of now just one Okay. Oh, I just wanted to, I was going to say just one, but I, it's a screenshot. So I didn't want to like speak incorrectly. <laughs> um, so you can select uh, one of the options here and there's like a little icon and um, that kind of represents what the um, benefit is. Uh, and then there's a little word like heat maps, feed map mm. recordings, surveys that tells you what the feature actually is like, the name of the action, but then there's the like visualize user behavior, discover how your users feel, which I'm assuming is also on the homepage somewhere. So it's kind of like connecting nice. the dots from what yeah. people saw earlier. Um, so I really like that because a lot of times I think we can go too hard in one way or the other where you end up creating the most vague flow ever and people are like, I don't know what you know, get actionable insights on blah, blah, blah is like, I just want to view reports, especially if they're not English as a first language and you don't have your product localized, like think about how, you know, Google Translate might translate these options. Like if you do something a little too flowery and really cool sounding, it's not going to be great. So I really, I really like how you've laid out the, the copy here. Um, did you test that a lot or was it yeah. just kind of something that you grabbed um, from previous success other places? Kind of both, really. Yeah. Um, we, we took it from somewhere else. We have this in, on the homepage. We adapted it to our needs to make sure that it's clear. And not, as you said, it's not just, you know, flowery wording uh, so that it can be clearer. Um, and then, you know, after the qualitative feedback, uh, we run experiments to get actual numbers to measure the performance that's awesome yeah and like, like to the point too on the design like the the benefit part is bigger and bolder so like mm, that is yeah, more in your right. face so you know like oh okay you're reminded of it still when you're selecting it um but i like that it kind of reiterates what the actual feature is so really pretty cool that. yeah i had a question around this uh how did you end up with this four and my that's the first question the second question is the order that that's in is it something you've tested i'm guessing most of your first new users pick the upper left option which is visualize user behavior is that assumption correct so i guess the first question is how do you end up with four yeah, so the um, the four we have here are the main tools of Hotjar. This is what most people come to Hotjar for. Uh, we could have shown other things like you know integrations and highlights and other uh, smaller features, uh, but 
you know, we thought, okay, if we provide too many options here, we'll probably just confuse people and we will get a lot of skips. Um, skip it, skipping is an option, of course, um, but most people actually do select uh, one of these options. Um, and yes, the order is kind of the, the usage that we have. Uh, most people do come to Hotjar for heat maps, at least at first. Then we see that, for example, you know, when they retain, maybe the um, usage patterns change. But when they start, uh, this is kind of the, the main uh, thing. That makes sense to me. And like, um, and so on the right, like next to the four options where you can choose, there's the quote that Ramley mentioned, like um, some social proof. Did you experiment with other things mm. in that place, like screenshots of the product, or mm. you know, a picture of Anna with the with the quote, um, or other things like that? We did, and we're actually still experimenting. We do have, um, as you as you can kind of see from the screen, there are a variety, multiple screens in this flow. And so in the various screens, there are different beats uh, and types of content. And we are, yeah, experimenting with this content still. Really, really, really love that. Um, did experimenting with this. Uh, I want to move on to the next screen here. And it's something that also is... Uh, we're working on an app use is installing the code snippet for people who are listening into this show. Uh, there's a screen now that says, how do you want to install Hotjar? And there's like one main box that says install with developer hub. <laughs> so it's obvious, I I'm guessing it's obvious that, you know, people who are coming in need a developer hub. Underneath that is uh, you know, two options, add the tracking code manually or use NPM packages. And then right below that is a bunch of other platforms. Install with platform, the Shopify, Wix, WordPress, Google Tag Manager, and a bunch of other things. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how this uh, uh, screen came about, this uh, this part of the onboarding uh, sign up? For sure. So this version that we're looking here is what is live now for larger companies. So you know, when you go through a sign up flow, you will say how many, how large your company is. And this is what you will see if you're in a larger uh, size company. Before this, we used to have one version for all, uh, let's say, where the primary option was the um, add-in tracking code manually. Secondarily, we had install with developer help, and we had one option only for the platforms. So we run, this was a very long, very complex experiment with a lot of uh, variants. And essentially, we saw the benefit of expanding the one platform's option to, to really showing the logos um, here in this level. And then we also saw very big differences between large companies and smaller companies. So for example, you're seeing in this option, which I mentioned is for the larger companies, the primary option is installing with developer help, which allows the person who comes here to send this uh, and share with a developer and engineer on their team. This is not something that smaller companies would do a lot, right? So for them, the primary option would be to just install the tracking code manually. Um, and so there are also NPM is an element that changes between large and small in terms of usage and adoption. So we really saw the value here of experimenting with different approaches, uh, different priorities between the elements. OK, what should be the primary option? What should be the secondary options? And it was really interesting for us to find out also, you know, the differences between how different company sizes or even roles between in the same company might uh, use this page and install the snippet differently. Totally. That's really interesting. And then what I'm I'm interested, like, is installing with a platform um, something that you see a lot of like people are stickier or get find time to value with faster when they especially not on the bigger teams like people on the smaller teams yeah some of these um some of these platforms make it very easy to install hotjar um, and actually when we detect that one of the so you will enter your url before this screen and so when we detect one of the platforms that becomes the primary option oh, so, so it replaces uh, the one on top that's smart yeah very smart. And for this, there's a little um, do it later in the upper right. It's um, oh, yeah, like right. plain text, essentially. Um, what does that do? Mm. That skips the installation. It sends the user to the, the main part of the product, what we call the overview. And it's not always bad uh, because, you know, a lot of times users want to see your product, want mm, to right. even, you know, obviously 
the functionality will be limited uh, without um, a snippet, but they can do something. They can get some value. They can click around, explore in their own terms. So it, it's, it's not a bad thing at all. Yep, that would be me. That's why I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I want to click to do it later. And then I want to see the product. And then I want right. to come and you know install it. So um, really interesting, really interesting. And do you have like... Um, uh, do you, you still consider those folks who've clicked it like important, right? Do you like track that and then like, you know, have them go get like a special email or anything like that? Mm. Are they just like have a, you know, different view, obviously? Yeah, they will get a reminder to install later. Um, there's also a dedicated flow, for example, from mobile. Because if you're mm. if you get to this page on mobile, you know you can sign up on mobile, create an account, but you're not likely to install. You know <laughs> your tracking code, your JavaScript snippet on mobile, right? And so, for example, on mobile, you're able to set up a reminder for yourself or to send it to a colleague. That's awesome. That makes sense. Really love this. And I guess one one final question on the screen is: Was my assumption correct that you know for a lot of you know the core target for for Hotjar wouldn't uh, most likely have access to the code base or you know wouldn't know how to install this. So the biggest call to action here with like a bright blue button is to share it with a developer for help. In this case, yes. Uh, in this case, I mean for larger companies. Mm. A lot of times, you know, smaller companies or sometimes, you know, it's maybe your own personal site. And so you maybe have nobody to share with or, you know, maybe you do, but you'll be the person installing. So that's why we see this personalization here in this page. I love it. I want to go to the last screen here that you shared uh, that you shared with us to to talk about it in terms of the design. Uh, is when I'm guessing this is when somebody has completed the sign up flow. Now they're in here. There's an overview, and then there's a suggested for you. There's three main square or boxes: save highlights, uh, invite team members, enable to factor authentication. Now. Uh, and then there's a checklist on the right. I love check. I love checklists. <laughs> I'm not sure what other people think about that, but get started with Hotjar. There's already two things that are checked off. It seems finish your Hotjar installation, and and surveys. Can you talk a little bit about this uh, the screen? All right. So this screen is uh, the first screen that users will see after the sign up flow and ideally after the tracking code installation. So this is what we call the overview, which provides as the name says, an overview of what's happened recently. So recent recordings, uh, feedback, et cetera. This, um, so we've done a few things with this screen, specifically in those light blue uh, parts. This is kind of the visual language that we're using for the more educational pieces that we're introducing. So starting with the bottom right, uh, that's the updated <laughs> new uh, Getting Started Guide. This follows the user's uh, through their first steps, uh, guiding them through the installation if they haven't installed it, and then a few key uh, steps or tools uh, that they should pay attention to. And this, once again, is personalized based on who the user um, is, their goals, etc. Uh, we've seen a big success by moving this to this kind of floating widget, which can be collapsed or even dismissed. Um, but having this compared to like a dedicated page uh, definitely uh, brought advantages. The um, square tiles on top, uh, those are kind of suggestion tiles that we have. And with those, we're promoting some of those actions. Um, part of this is what I mentioned earlier with you know the golden path analysis, actions we want to push. So for example, saving highlights or inviting your team members to Hotjar, those are all actions that allow the user to get more value out of Hotjar and also um, promote retention, essentially, because you know, once you get more value, of course, it will stay with Hotjar. Um, or you know, even other things like uh, enabling two-factor authentication. Um, a lot of our users care about uh, security, but you know, these are features that are a lot of times a little more obscure or hidden. And so by having something like this, it's not obtrusive. It's not like a pop-up in your face. Uh, and you can dismiss it anytime if you really hate it, but <laughs> you probably won't. And so this is like a, a small way um, to promote things that actually we um, really increase the adoptions uh, of these things. Love this. Any thoughts, Lila, in terms of um, you know the suggested for you or the checklist or? <laughs> yeah, my uh, eyes. I'm like the star eyes emoji right now. I love, <laughs> I love uh, suggested things, and I'm wondering what 
like so is a highlight just something that they can basically save and like come back to later that's an that's like seems like a good retention delighter of a feature in general um that is that why that ended up being highlighted or is that like a newer feature just curious Actually, both, uh, yeah. because <laughs> yes, we so highlights was one of those things that came up in our analysis where we saw the people that create highlights and you know save these highlights in collections that can be themed around you know a topic or an opportunity uh, retain better, and it's also one of the newer features. So that means that maybe less you know there's not as established as say something like recordings or heat maps, and so it's something that we want to push more because we're seeing that it promotes value. Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, anything where you can get like those those types of features where you can get people saving, pinning, yeah. sticking thing, like connecting two platforms together. Like you say, you get a lot more value out of it because like you're creating it as your database or your place of record. So um, love to see that. It's interesting, though, that it's not on your checklist um is it maybe too advanced too far down the line not an onboarding thing it depends on the on your goal mm. so oh. you know wow this i think the one in the screenshot is the checklist for yeah it's the one for feedback so it focuses on surveys and mm. feed on surveys and feedback first then has like a combined step for recordings and heat maps so kind of secondary you know at the bottom but then depending on your selections you will get different things that so sophisticated. Fun. Yeah. I don't want everybody listening to feel bad if you're not as sophisticated <laughs> as Hotjar. Okay. It's goals. It's not shame. Okay. I'm yeah, saying that true. to myself partially, <laughs> but hashtag absolutely goals. loving it. Yes. Gosh, that goals. No, I, I just want to re re reiterate what we just heard. Like the checklist on Hotjar adapts to the options that people, the new users choose in the, the sign up flow. So, that's like, you know, like once again, improving user onboarding 101, essentially, once you have that sophistication as, as, as Lila is, is saying, for sure. Well, thank you for, for talking a little bit about this. Uh, part of the things that we want to share as well and we want to ask you is, uh, you know, what are some things that, that uh, you know, you're currently working on that you're, you're excited about? Like, what are some things that you're looking to adapt next? Uh, for for this experience, you know, you talked a little bit about experiments with the uh, the testimonial on, you know, choosing those uh, those options there. But anything else that you're like super jazzed or super excited about that you can share to the folks uh, and not have to sign an NDA to, to share with with us. For sure, we're investing more uh, and more in personalization and custom guidance. So you've seen some of the things uh, we're keeping on iterating and experimenting more um, in this direction, which so far has proven successful. Um, and then, uh, you know, when it comes to onboarding, a big topic is also helping users achieving their goals in a way that is not overwhelming. You, you know, you want to take into account users that are maybe are experts and will need different guidance, maybe less guidance. Um, and so, yeah, really striking that balance between helping users achieve their goals, uh, but also, yeah, not driving them crazy. Oh, story of my life. I completely understand that. What are What is something that surprised you in building this, um, this experience or experiences? Um, is there something you were like convinced was going to be a winner and then was a flop or other way around? More or less. I mean, we the assumption was that personalization was good. Uh, the differences were probably even greater than we thought between you know some of the segments that we identified. Um, I guess you know something funny that where we kind of had to backtrack a little bit was some of the prettier things. Like we had some very pretty empty states, um, and then. You know, when we were like, okay, what if we remove the illustrations and, you know, make this thing a little mm, more in your face about, hey, don't forget to do this and that. Uh, some of those things worked. Oh. So that was a learning. It's um, one of those sad learnings, I feel like, you know, you're like, oh, <laughs> but I wanted it to be pretty. It's like, pretty. It is. Yeah. It Couldn't is. you just let me have this? This is me and my, my tail with uh, plain text emails. That's like, if you know me, I'm like such a plain text emailer these days because you know what? It they just work. works. 
Yeah. yeah. The good news is that, you know, once you actually do the thing, which in that case was about installing the tracking code, then you get pretty widgets afterwards. <laughs> so it's only temporary. <laughs> That's great. Perfect. It's you got to really earn great. it. You got to earn yeah. the pretty widgets, you know. I love it. Well, uh, one final question from, from us. Where can people find out more about you, more about uh, Hotjar online? Do you want them to find your LinkedIn or, you know, just not at all? And you just want them to go to Hotjar. So this is your time to call out anything. Sure. When, when it comes to Hotjar, it's easy. Hotjar.com. Also, the Hotjar blog is... Um, has a lot of great content. So definitely recommend that. Uh, myself, you can find me on LinkedIn uh, at Alessio Lizo, sometimes on Twitter, uh, always at Alessio Lizo. Uh, you can also find me at alessiolizo.com. I, in addition to product design, I make fonts. So I'm a top designer. Oh, wow. So like, wow, you can find cool. <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, you can find my fonts on alessiolizo.com, FontSpring, Google Fonts, my fonts. All okay, well, I know what I'm procrastinating next <laughs> for the next hour. Font creeping. That's so exciting. There you go. Cool. Yeah. And yeah, lessyalizer.com slash portfolio has more product design related things. Nice. Thank you so much, Alessia. This was so fun. Grazie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I will shame myself with some Italian. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>